On my sixth day in Scotland, I drove from Glasgow back to Edinburgh on the M8 freeway to attend the Scotch Whiskey Training School at the Scotch Whiskey Experience. Scotch Whiskey Experience is located on the hill near Edinburgh Castle, but there is no general parking, so you need to park at the bottom of the hill and hike up the stairs. In fact, this is the view from where I parked my rental car. The Scotch Whiskey Training School is a day-long course immersed in the world of Scotch Whiskey. It consists of a mixture of lectures, slides, and hands-on activities that are entertaining and fun as well as highly educational and informative. If you take the class, you're going to want to take notes because there is a short essay exam. It is not a multiple choice or matching questions exam. If you pass the exam, you'll be awarded a certificate of expertise, which will be mailed to you, and it's recognized by the Scotch whiskey industry. I think the course is ideal for both whiskey enthusiasts as well as whiskey tourism professionals. In fact, there were about 10 people in my class, four of which were working in the industry, and I met several people at the distilleries I visited who had taken the course. All of the training materials are provided. You don't need to study beforehand, but I do highly recommend taking notes and the pen and note paper are provided. The cost for the course is 199 pounds. And you'll also dine at the cafe where I had haggis for the second time, served with potatoes, and I drank a bottle of Scotland's second most popular beverage, Iron Brew. It smells and tastes sort of like orange bubble gum and is extremely sweet. At the end of the class, you'll play Master Blender, similar to my experience at Glen Goyne Distillery, and take home a bottle of your very own special blend. All right, so my visit to the Scotch Whiskey Experience was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed the class, and I think it was sort of a good launching point uh, for the rest of my tours. So having been to the uh, Glen Goyne Distillery and did a master class there, and then took this uh, whiskey class, then after that, every distillery I went to was sort of a reinforcement or a lab work, uh, you might think of it that way, of what I had already studied. So would I recommend taking a class? If you're going to work, uh, say, in, in Scotch tourism, you live in Scotland, England, or, or maybe even Kentucky, in the, in, in the bourbon industry, definitely, uh, in fact, uh, as I mentioned in my notes, um, there were people who I had met later on at other distilleries who had taken the class. So again, highly recommend it. Now, if you're going to be in Scotland for a week, you come from the United States or somewhere else in Europe or something like that, spend an entire day sitting in a class, maybe I would hold off on it. Um, that's just a big chunk of time. But since I was going to be there for more than two weeks, I felt it was worth taking one day off uh, to take a class. Also, um... If you have been a student of whiskey and you understand all the aspects of production, you understand uh, the various uh, Scotch whiskey regions and all that kind of thing, maybe you probably don't need the class either. Um, obviously going into the class, having already been into whiskey for a little while, and studying it, not everything was new, but a lot of it was a reinforcement of what if I, I had already studied. Um, but that's all right. Repetition uh, is a key to uh, maintaining something you've studied long term. So I didn't mind that. But a lot of you probably don't even need to take such a class. Uh, you could get enough information off the internet, off of books you read, um, off my own channel, perhaps. But uh, I do think it's a, a class that's worth taking uh, if you have the time, the money, um, and you're looking to actually work in whiskey tourism. Um, so when I went to uh, Glen Goyne and did a master class, again, that's not a title you should probably take too seriously. Uh, it's not official. And uh, I did a whole uh, live sh show on a Whiskey Wednesday, Wine and Whiskey Wednesday, which I talked about whiskey education. If you haven't seen that, you might want to go back and check that out. I also did an, another live show talking about uh, the title Whiskey Sommelier. I talked about titles and stuff like that uh, related to wine and whiskey. You might want to check that out. That sort of uh, dovetails, I think, uh, with this video. But at the end of uh, the class, we get to produce our own little whiskey, or I should say, blend our own whiskey. And then you get to put it in this little tube, take home as a souvenir. 
Now, the whiskeys that we blended or I blended in, in, at Glen Goyne were all cask strength. So you, you bring home 200 milliliters, but at cask strength in the high 50s in terms of ABV, you, know, you add a little water to it, you're getting more uh, than just 200 milliliters. Whoa, dropped a little bottle here. Um, so this is my blend. I called it the Sniper's Blend, and you put a little box here. This is, I don't think this is 200 milliliters. I would guess it's probably around 150. And you write down, here's your little certificate or whatever uh, as to what your private blend is. And in this I put, uh, let's see, uh, 10 milliliters of a grain whiskey, 30 of a Highland whiskey, 40 of a Speyside whiskey, and 20 of an Isla whiskey. So that was my own private blend. Uh, the ABVs were pretty, I don't think they were cast strength, if I recall correctly, but one way to find out is to pour myself a little uh, of this little sample I brought home. Now, one of the things about in blending this and trying to figure out what I want to put a blend, as well as this one, is wines and whiskeys need a certain amount of time together to marry. So this has been in here for a few weeks. So when you're blending wines, let's say you're making a Meritage blend, a Bordeaux-style blend, and we use... Cabernet, Merlot, Cap Franc, Petit Verdot, Carmenere, or whatever, um, Malbec. Um, you need to be able to de know in your head, based on what you've put into the blend, what this is going to be like six months, a year from now, because all those various components, they may taste good now in a glass, but they're going to intermingle um, and become quite something different six months down the road. So you need to be able to sort of forecast, this is what it smells and tastes like now, but six months from now, it's gonna be something else. Well, I don't have that much experience in blending whiskeys, so mostly what I could do is take some of my preferences. I like a little bit of peat in all my whiskeys, in terms of my preference, so I put just a little bit of Isla peat in it. I like a little bit of um, fruit of, i say the Highlands and Speyside, anyway, and that little sort of a backbone of a nice grain whiskey in the background. So basically I was just sort of guessing based on personal preferences as to what I might potentially like in a blend. Does it actually work out? Well, I'm gonna taste them now, but a year from now, I'm gonna come back to this and try it again. And just an experiment, a learning experience, we'll see how it goes. So it does have just that whiff of smoke, which is what I'm looking for. Yeah, I love big, you know, peaty Isla whiskeys, but in this case, I just wanted a whiff of it. And that little 10% definitely did it. So it's kind of like, um, in that sense, it, it, it's kind of like a, um, like a Cabelton. It's kind of like a, an Orkney uh, peated whiskey. It's got plenty of fruit. It's got some nice maltiness to it, some citrus. I actually got to say, what I was aiming for, I've actually achieved here, um, and it actually worked out pretty good. The um, uh, Glen Goyne cast strength, I tasted it uh, when I did my video for Glen Goyne, and it was really, really, really sort of overpowerful, I thought, is a little too much, but of course it's been a cast strength, you can kind of expect that, but this, I'm liking it just as it is. So we weren't told what the producers were from the various regions, just generalities as to where they're from. This is really, really nice. I mean, I'm going to say so to myself. I like this better than my Glen Goyne, um, but of course I like it as it is now. It's got some real nice vanilla notes to it, um, some caramel, toffee. Uh, it's got some richness to it, uh, medium body, and it's just got this sort of waft of smoke going right through it. Hmm. All right, quite tasty. Going to come back to another year and try it again. All right, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you're considering going to Scotland, you want a few tips, you can uh, contact me. Just leave a, a comment down below. And as much as I can, I'll uh, try to respond. All right, in my next video, uh, I head off to Isla with Scottish Roots. And we go to Deanston, we go to Oban. And then we uh, head over to the ferry, over to Isla, and start our journey the following day. All right, until next time, cheers. 
If you have benefited from my wine or whiskey studies and you wish to support this ongoing work, I ask that you become a Patreon supporter. The link to my Patreon account is in the description box below.